don't exactly remember how old I was when I first saw it, but I vividly remember this scene being my first introduction to Spirited Away and Studio Ghibli's works. I remember watching the news with my family as any other day while having dinner, and suddenly a weird, super rich and detailed animation clip appeared on my TV screen, and I was just completely captivated. While researching for this project, I read a couple of articles and one specifically described Yubaba the best as a morally great antagonist. There was just so much about this character that although menacing and terrifying at times, also revealed a more subtle sweetness and warmth. For this doll, which I made for a trade with a super duper talented doll artist that you should definitely check out, please do. I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description down below. The theme that we chose to work on was clearly Studio Ghibli. And after sketching some possible designs, I just couldn't shake this idea out of my head of making like my own version of Yubaba. I tried to think about how she could have looked way before the version that we get to know and meet in the movie. At first I just wanted to change her hair color because I was thinking about making a younger version of Yubaba. I thought how her hair maybe could have been blonde or red or light brown when she was younger. But I really liked the gray hair so the gray hair had to stay. I just started by comparing her to other characters from Studio Ghibli, like Sophie and her transformation between her old and young self, as well as the Witch of the Waste and the change of appearance that she had from before and after losing her powers. It was actually fun to in a way create a backstory for one of my favorite characters and to think if she was always a witch and born with magical powers or maybe if she trained to become as powerful as we see her to be in the movie. When we actually meet Yubaba in her office, uh, we find this opulent atmosphere and we get to know right off the bat that as much as she's powerful and has a lot of control over her business, she too obeys to set rules of this universe that she's a part of. I remember being just a bit confused and I guess relieved the first time that I watched this movie as a kid that I wasn't as scared of her as I thought that I was going to be which was very much in contrast to what I would normally feel toward like a villain in a movie. As an adult I can see that as much as this story was set in a very fantastical world, it felt as real as real life. And some of the darker themes touch are very clear but I feel like they're never overpowering nor the main focus of the story. A sense of peace always shines brighter than anything else every time that I rewatch this film. I didn't want her expression to look too angry nor too relaxed and I think a kind of serious expression was probably like what did it hurt the best. And I think sculpting her eyebrows instead of painting them on like I normally would um, really helped giving her a more pronounced expression without exaggerating. Painting faces for my dolls especially is always kind of hard to film. The fact that I work in front of a small fan uh, because here is just insanely hot and I have three lights on my desk because our room is just very dark <laughs> uh, makes the painting dry very very quickly. Luckily I didn't have any problems with this project uh, but it does happen from time to time that I end up not liking my first attempt and I have to scratch the paint off and sand it and then paint it again and it's a whole thing. One thing that I started adding only like recently, I think a few projects ago, uh, is painting a slightly darker shadow under the upper eyelid. In general it just helps bringing the eyes to life and giving them a little bit more depth. The first dolls that I painted, I do remember painting the eyes completely white. But then once I, you know, coat the eyes with like a layer of resin, that normally ends up making the white even more bright and they kind of just look unnatural. I don't know why I always use big brushes for small details. 
as I'm saying this, I can see that in this footage, I'm actually struggling and there's a lot of hesitation to try to do these highlights in her eyes. So yes, maybe I should start using smaller brushes. For the shoes, I really had to rewatch the movie with Yubaba shoes in mind uh, to find a good reference. So as soon as I saw this scene with her jumping down, I just literally had to pause it and take a screenshot uh, to have an idea of how her shoes were going to look like and just keep it as a reference. And then I just sculpted them and painted them accordingly to the reference that I found. Painting the hands was also a bit tricky. Uh, I of course had to find some references for both hands. Uh, to try to match the rings and the placement of the rings in the right order. As my dolls have normally four fingers though, I did end up skipping one of the rings uh, for each hand. So each hand just has three rings instead of four. I feel like armature bodies look a little bit weird at any stage until they're complete um i started by wrapping and attaching with hot glue some bandages to cover the exposed wires and i then just go ahead and start wrapping my wool stuffing around it i also noticed that i have snow white's head in the background if you can see it don't mind that i just usually work on multiple projects at once just because if i feel maybe stuck on one i keep working on the other and so on I need to felt the body and corrected any uneven or asymmetrical parts that stood out the most at this point. As I would normally cover the wool body with fabric to keep everything in place, I do need to try my best to be as clean and smooth as possible at this stage as I'm, I'm not gonna be able to change the body shape after I cover it with fabric. Another aspect of Yubaba that I absolutely love is the way that she is as controlled as she is unpredictable. I feel like maybe I'm reading into it, but she's very powerful and knows how to control her powers clearly. But when she's mad and lashes out, and I feel like I noticed them mostly in the scene where she realizes that her kid is missing. It almost feels like her powers are overtaking her a bit and I think they represented it with her hair and the way that it gets messy and almost alive in moments of rage. I absolutely love this aspect and since I was thinking that maybe as her younger self she would be a little bit less skilled. Uh, controlling her own emotions and powers um, even though I left her hair like perfectly styled for the most part I decided to add some baby hairs on the side just to make it look a little bit more messy and I attached some yarn with a, a little bit of E6000 glue to the side of her face and just added these little tails that I think added a little bit of like a rebel attitude to the character when I feel myself making this hair bun, I was thinking that I would add the hair clip as soon as I was done with it because I was still making it at the time. But I didn't consider how hard and resistant this bun actually is and that it was impossible to push the hair clip into it after I was done with it as you would normally do with like real hair which meant that i had to remake the whole thing and the second time around i just put the hair clip first and then wrapped and secured all the yarn around it the gem was something that i could have bought honestly done um and i actually found some super cool and realistic looking ones online but as for the rings and the earrings and all the details i just felt like painting it instead to give her like this cartoonish and fantasy look to cover the whole body i used the dark gray fabric honestly her body will be mostly all covered up by the dress and the undergarments so I didn't really worry about the color that I picked to cover the body but it did end up matching the darker parts of her dress for the best, a couple of things went wrong, but mostly I miscalculated her measurements. Let me show you what I mean by that. As you can see, the vest just didn't fit at all. The problem was I calculated the measurements to fit her chest and back without keeping in count how much space 
the sleeves we're going to take and I just had to modify some proportions of the pattern. And this is the wrong vest and this is the right pattern compared to the first pattern that I made and now it actually fits perfectly. I started by tracing it on the fabric of my choice. In this case, I layered it with like a second fabric. And I normally will pick the same fabric or a similar fabric for the back. Then after calculating how much fabric I was going to use for the whole dress, I was just stressing out a little bit, thinking that maybe I was going to run out of this blue fabric while working on it. So instead, I decided to use a white one because it's the back and you're not even really going to see it anyway. I then sew it with the machine following most of the pattern, just leaving one side undone so that I could flip the vest through that side inside out. I then cut all the excess of fabric off and with my small scissors I just went ahead and clipped all around the edges of the neck and sleeves areas. Then I just iron it with a hair iron and it's very useful to have it around normally because I needed to just iron some tiny pieces of fabric or small clothing. So yeah. Now for the skirt, look how cute the edges are, like just very flowy. For the top of the skirt, I cut two pieces of fabric following the skirt pattern that I drew for this design specifically. And we'll just add like a string made out of the same fabric uh, that I'll keep folding like every two centimeters or so to create this fold effect that I showed you in the white skirt. One thing that I had to re remind myself at this point was to not put the string on the outside of the edge but inside between the two layers kind of like a like a sandwich because when we are gonna turn the skirt inside out that's when actually the edge is gonna be on the outside at this stage it's still the inside so just remember that because i forgot it and i think with the first white skirt that i did i forgot it and then i put it outside and then I, it was inside once i flipped it inside out I used the same pattern for these sleeves as I did for the Snow White doll that I, you just kind of saw in the background before. Um, which was very helpful because they pretty much look the same, it's just like a puffy sleeve. Uh, the only difference between the two is that in this case I just added more filling inside the sleeve just to make them look a little bit more puffy. Then I just needed to sew it against her shoulders and attach the last details on top of it. I think at this point I thought that I was going to attach the vest first um, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway but then I figured that it's probably better if I worked on the skirts instead. She will have two white skirt sections at the bottom that will overlap and then two at the top that will overlap as well so it creates this like very full looking skirt. And this is how she looked before I attach all the details. And let me show you how she looked after I was done. I feel like I'm repeating myself because I am, but I honestly love working on this project and any project that is based or inspired by Studio Ghibli's movies and characters. No matter what, this doll was just a passion project for me. I love working on it, I love making it, and I'm so excited for the other Yoboba project that I'm still working on at the moment. You can tell that I'm a fan because I keep just making projects about the same character over and over. Um, if you like to keep up with my projects, and if you want to see any behind the scenes or like you know, just take a look at what I do. Um, you can find all the links to my other social medias in the description down below. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Which I don't know when that's gonna be. Because hey, I'm very slow. It takes me a long time to make these videos, guys. So thank you for waiting. Thank you for your patience. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.